Hi everybody. The goal with this video is to talk about the Articles of Confederation. It's our first constitution and it's also known as the Swiss cheese government. So before we jump in, let's look at a quick timeline of during the revolution um, and then right after the revolution. So in 1776, July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence is signed. When they sign the Declaration of Independence, they are saying, we want to be independent or separate from Great Britain. They realize right away that they need to get started on creating a new government, because if they're not going to be part of Great Britain, they need to have their own government. So the colonists start working on a new government, and they call it the Articles of Confederation. That is just a year after they signed the Declaration of Independence. Then we fight the war for years and years and years, fighting for that independence that we want, until we finally win at the Battle of Yorktown, when Britain surrenders in 1781. Two years later, both sides signed the Treaty of Paris, and Americans are finally independent when the Treaty of Paris is signed. When the Treaty of Paris is signed and we are independent, it means that we are no longer colonists. Now we are part of our own country. We are Americans. So when they signed the Declaration of Independence, like I just said, they declared themselves separate from Great Britain. And as I said, that means that they needed a new government. They needed some form of laws and rules and structure in order for America to survive on its own. They wanted to make the government exactly the opposite of what King George III had done. So in their first government, when they were writing the Articles of Confederation, they decided to do everything opposite of King George. King George made one person in charge of everything and everyone. They didn't want that. King George made laws without the representation of the people. He just made a law if he felt like it. They didn't want that. And King George, the government cared more about big colonies like Virginia than the little ones, and they didn't want that either. So when they're creating their new government, they're trying to make it the opposite of King George III. They decided the best way to make a government that was opposite of King George III was to create a confederation. That's probably a new vocabulary word for you. A confederation is a loose group of individuals that agree to sort of just be there for each other. So today, in 2021, we are the United States and the states work together under one government. But when they decided to make a confederation with this first government, they looked more like what you see on the map on the screen, where the states were all sort of separate, relying on each other. They were sort of loosely together because they were all next to each other, but they weren't really one united country like we are today. They needed a new um, independent country with a new written set of laws. So they wrote their first constitution. Remember, a constitution is a written set of laws. The first constitution was called the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union Between the States. Today, when we're talking about it, we just use those first three words, Articles of Confederation. This was our first constitution, our first written set of laws for the country. The laws in the Articles of Confederation gave most of the power to the states. Each individual state had its own power and its own strength. So the states were all very strong in making their own laws, making their own taxes, making their own leaders and governors. The national government, the government for the whole country, was very, very weak. It gave almost no power to the national or entire country's government. There are five major weaknesses in the Articles of Confederation. We're going to briefly go over those five with this introduction video. The first one, as you can see, is a weak national government. So again, the national, federal, or central government, all three words for basically the same thing, 
means it's the government that applies to the whole country. And in the Articles of Confederation, they made it very weak. Another weakness of the Articles of Confederation was that the national government had no power to tax. States could tax the people living in that specific state, but the national government couldn't tax. Another weakness is that there was no common currency. Remember, currency is a vocab word that means like money. So each state had its own currency. Each state had its own dollar bill. And if you lived in Massachusetts, you had the Massachusetts currency. But if you had to travel to Georgia, you would get to Georgia and you wouldn't be able to spend your money because the currency was different for each state. Another weakness is that each state gets one vote in the national government. So Virginia, a pretty big state, was equal to tiny Rhode Island, a pretty small state. This was a weakness because it meant that places like Virginia that had so many more people than Rhode Island um, had equal power as Rhode Island and the big states really didn't like that very much. The last weakness that we'll talk about is that there was no president and no courts. Remember, they're trying to be the opposite of King George III. So with these five weaknesses, they pretty much accomplish that. They become the opposite of what they had under King George III. The national government is very weak. There's no power to tax. Remember how much they hated taxes under King George III? There's no common currency. Nobody is saying you have to use this money. Each state gets one vote, so the national government isn't favoring one big state over the small states. And finally, there's no president. There's nobody like King George III to be in charge of everybody. As a result of the AOC, or Articles of Confederation, we have our first constitution. This is a good thing. We have our first written set of laws. It's our first attempt at being a country separate from Great Britain. Another result is this thing called the Northwest Ordinance. The Northwest Ordinance created a process for adding new states, and it also outlawed slavery in the Western territories. So when we become independent in 1783, we are 13 states, but we don't stay that way for long. This Northwest Ordinance in our first constitution creates a process for adding new states. These are both good things, but there are some bad results of the Articles of Confederation. The first one is that the government was too weak and it caused a lot of problems. So they met their goal, the national government was weak, but they made it too weak. They almost went too far opposite of King George III. Eventually, they realized that the Articles of Confederation is too weak, it's not gonna work. We have to throw it away and make a new constitution. The Articles of Confederation is often called the Swiss cheese government. The reason for that is because there's all kinds of holes. The image you see on your screen is of Swiss cheese, and Swiss cheese has holes in it. These weaknesses under the Articles of Confederation are like holes in our government or holes in our country. That's why we sometimes refer to the Articles of Confederation as the Swiss cheese government.